we're going to start with a team that on paper is going to look like a, we think, a much improved team. But due to the fact that they share a division with Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, we don't have them as competing, a contender for division uh, pennant or going to Indianapolis. And Gary, that's the Maryland Terrapins. The, the question for Maryland this year is, can Mike Loxley finally put it together? On, on paper, this is an extremely talented team, certainly for what he's had. He did watch some wide receivers walk out the door um, in Rakeem Jarrett, Jacob Copeland. They're gone to the NFL. But Talia Tungavailoa is still there. He's putting up incredible numbers through the air. And the defense, uh, certainly defending the, the, the pass, should be fairly solid this year. Jaquan Shepard transfers in from Cincinnati. Corey Coley Jr. is there, too. He returns. That should be your cornerback one, your cornerback two. The defense overall made major strides last year, and you talked about that in your article for the Preview Magazine. They cut down on points per game by a full score, by seven points, and yards per game were cut by nearly 50. So the offense is going to have some fun pieces. The defense you're hoping takes a step forward, although I do think the rush defense could be the question mark here, the linebackers specifically. You're really high on Maryland. So tell me what you see when you look at this Terrapins team on paper. Where do you kind of project that ceiling out to be? Well, so, look, I wrote the Maryland Terrapins article, and – when you read the little tag on my little screen here, the keeper of the hot takes is about to have to do some work. So I have the Maryland Terrapins this year going 10 and two. Um, That's what I project them to do. And I'm going to try to make that case as strong as I possibly can. So for all my big 10 fans who are screaming at me, just listen for a second. And for my Maryland fans, uh, you're welcome. (laughs) First thing that you have to look at is what they've done in their coaching staff. Okay. Josh Gaddis is as good of an offensive coordinator as you can hire. That's just point blank period. That's as good as you can do. And yes, pairing with Kevin Sumlin, that's, that's good too. I know he didn't really work out as a head coach, but a good offensive mind. Those two guys in your meeting room are going to do really, really well for your offensive staff. And you get to pair him with the guy who, and I think Trey, I'm going to slightly correct from a little bit earlier, the guy who we did rank the number one quarterback this year going into the Big Ten. You're right. Right after I said right. that, I was like, oh, no, we put Talia. Yeah, we <laughs> put Talia Tanner, Tanner was number two. quarterback. And Tanner was number two, Talia was number one. Yes, correct. And a big reason for that is the fact that Talia's been really, really good. Nobody's really been paying attention because he plays at Maryland and they're not necessarily going to get the media hype because they do end up finishing fourth or fifth in their division, typically. Um, but Talia's been really, really good. Outside of an injury, he's putting up some massive numbers. He's completed – over 67% of his passes for almost 8,000 yards and like two plus seasons, right? He didn't quite play a third season. He had some spot starts and things like that. But if he's healthy this year, this team can play extremely well on offense. I think there's some real breakout candidates. I really like the running backs, uh, specifically Roman Hemby. He almost rushed for a thousand yards last year. He was averaging over five yards a carry on the ground. He's a bit of a bit of a power back maybe, but he can really flash with the plays that he can make. Um, and then when you're looking at the receivers, there's a lot coming back. I like Tyrese Chambers a lot. I think he could have a really good season. He's a real breakout candidate for me. Um, a guy that when I was watching some of the film in sort of, you know, looking in the preseason, what do I have on film for him um, and really breaking this team down, I think he could kind of explode as a number one target who I point out, they kind of haven't had a number one target as their main guy at Maryland. They haven't had one guy to really step up and say, I'm your go-to. And so for me, when I look at Maryland, I look at their schedule. It it sets up really nice for a good season. When you look at how they start, they start with Towson, Charlotte, Virginia, three of the worst teams you could possibly pick um, to, to, you know, do anything this year. So I think they'll start an easy three and at Michigan state, That's going to be a daytime game, so you don't have to worry about anything weird at night. Um, And then Indiana, I think they start 5-0. I think they're cruising. I think Talia's getting things rolling with this new offensive coordinator. And I think that this defense is kind of finding its footing against some much inferior competition and starting to get a little bit of swagger on, right? Starting to kind of think, hey, we can play well. We're getting some, some good performances. Then they go to Ohio State. That's tough. I'm going to leave that behind for just a second. Illinois. I think they win that one, and then a bye week. And then you go 
at Northwestern, Penn State, at Nebraska, Michigan, Rutgers. Here's kind of why I think they go 10-2. and two. I don't see any losses on their schedule outside of Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan. Two of those games are at home. Two of those games are against brand new quarterbacks, and you have an experienced quarterback coming back. You have some really solid pieces on the offensive side of the football. And when you look at some of their losses last year, Talia got hurt towards the end of the season, which is why at the end of the season there were some, you know, maybe not so sparkling moments. But you lost to Michigan by seven points. You lost to Purdue by two. And the Ohio State game, Talia ended up coming back from that one, still a little bit hobbled. And if you guys get notifications from ESPN, you saw the notifications just like I did, that they were in that game underneath a minute. So outside of a couple weird defensive plays, they almost had Ohio State too. I think this year they get one of them. If you ask me which one I think is most likely, I think they get Penn State at home. You know, you get to you get to play Penn State at home probably with one loss at that point to Ohio State. And, and you know, you're going to be highly ranked against highly ranked. I think a pretty good crowd for that one. Um, young quarterback who I think we all expect a lot out of. I, I just kind of think that one sets up real nice. So if you're telling me that they're going to go over three against the big dogs, then sure. Write them down for nine and three. That's a really good year, but I think they snag one of them. Nothing's perfect. Nothing goes chalk in college football. And, and I think that that November 4th match against Penn state, I think goes Maryland way. I could be wrong about this. They could be terrible. But if I'm right and they go 10 and 2, then we're going to make one of our colleagues over at the transfer portal eat a shoe. That's what I'm hoping for. And that's about what I'm going to hang my hat on. So this is my go Maryland. That That's about what I have for them. Well, hey, I mean, yeah, fun team. Fun team. I think 9 and 3 is where I've got them. Trey, you've got them at 9 and 3 as well. Yep. We expect them to to do quite well. That, that defense, or I'm sorry, that offense combined with a – a little bit of an easier schedule, I think sets up very, very well. So, I mean, in the words of, of SVP, let's go to Bentley's baby. Let's, let's celebrate yeah. a successful Terrapins <laughs> year would be the best year uh, for the Terrapins under Mike Loxley. Gracious. Yep. How-